Hey everybody it's Screaming Screen, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to keeping up to date with all of Screaming Screen's great new videos. Ant-Man and the Wasp is a lot of fun and while the signs are pointing to it being a somewhat small hit for Marvel Studios, it's fair to say that a third installment is a must, especially as the sequel leaves a lot of doors open for future storytelling possibilities. With that in mind, it goes without saying that the movie features a lot of cool references not only to the MCU's future but its comic book roots as well. That's what we're taking a look at here as well delve into everything from the movie's coolest references, Easter eggs, cameos and more some of which you may have noticed but most we're guessing you missed. Jeffrey Ballard Sonny Birch says on a number of occasions that he has a mole inside the FBI and we later learn that it's actually Jeffrey Ballard. While that name may not instantly ring any bells, he's actually known as Centurion in the comic books and is an enemy of both Goliath and Iron Man. It's unlikely we'll ever see him suit up in the MCU but it was definitely a cool idea to use the Z-list villain in the Ant-Man sequel. Them. At the end of Ant Man and the Wasp, a tiny Scott Lang, Hope Van Dyne, and Cassie Lang all enjoy a movie at a makeshift drive in which is soon interrupted by a pesky moth. The film they're watching features gigantic hints terrorizing humans, and what you may not realize is that the footage is actually taken from 1954 pulp classic Them. It's not exactly a must see, but it is a fun product of its time and makes good use of the concept of nuclear energy creating monsters who end up terrorizing us all. Animal House When Scott is kidnapped fairly early on in the sequel, He's watching Animal House. You might not think that means much but the fact he's watching the scene where Pinklow, Tom Hulse, and Dave Jennings, Donald Sutherland, have a pot-fueled discussion about there being galaxies within atoms is definitely significant. This is obviously a fun nod to the quantum realm and what comes next in the movie. Hank Pym's Hot Wheels In one of the coolest moments in A Man and the Wasp, we see that Hank Pym keeps a collection of miniaturized cars inside a vintage Hot Wheels storage case in the shape of a wheel. It appears to be an original meaning that the former Ant-Man has probably had it in his possession since the 1950s slash 60s. Giant Man While we all refer to Ant-Man's larger form as Giant Man that wasn't made canon in Captain America. Civil War but it is in A Man and the Wasp. During a news broadcast, he's shown on television along with the caption Giant Man resurfaces in San Francisco Bay. It appears as if the public knows Ant-Man better as Giant Man which makes sense when they can't really see the former. Whether or not this means Scott will adopt the persona on a permanent basis remains to be seen. Project G O L I A T H in the sequel. We learned that Bill Foster worked with Hank Pym on Project G O L I A T H and once increased his own size. Even if it wasn't as big as Scott Lang is able to go here and in Captain America, Civil War. That's not a huge surprise but what you may not realize is that this was referenced in a deleted Iron Man 2 scene when Tony Stark cast J A R V I S. For more information on what that was, the Quantum Realm's Time Vortex. Earth's mightiest heroes getting their hands on the Infinity Gauntlet and reversing what Thanos did in Avengers. Infinity War seems too simple a plot for Avengers 4, so Janet Van Dyne mentioning a Time Vortex in the mid-credits scene is definitely important, especially as Scott ends up being trapped inside the Quantum Realm. As a result, his only way out could be to travel through one of them. That explains why we've seen set photos of him interacting with a younger Steve Rogers and it all but confirms that, as expected, time travel will indeed end up being a huge part of Avengers 4 next year. Alice Star Ant-Man doesn't have the largest of rogues galleries but Egghead, introduced in 1962's Tales to Astonish a number 38, is among the most memorable. While he doesn't cross paths with any of our heroes in this movie, a flashback does reveal that he used to work with Hank Pym and that after stealing his ideas, something his comic book counterpart is also known for, he inadvertently created Ghost. That's a huge departure from the source material but his signature lab coat and bald head is more than enough to make him recognizable in a man and the wasp when we see his quantum realm experiment and horribly with him and his wife dying, and Ava being left with some tragic superpowers. X-Con In Ant-Man and the Wasp we learn that Luis, 
Dave, and Kurt have launched Texcon Security Consultants alongside Scott, who has to work from home. While it has a different name, comic book fans will no doubt realize that Earth's tiniest Avenger actually founded this group in 2015's Ant-Man No. 2 but it was called Ant-Man Security Solutions there. Perhaps that's a sign of what's to come in the MCU? Stan Lee's cameo. Stan the man Lee's health may not be as good as it once was but he thankfully still makes an appearance here during one of the movie's standout sequences. After the wasp shrinks one of the bikes belonging to Sonny Birch's thugs, she accidentally does the same to a car he's about to get in. Shocked by the sudden disappearance of his vehicle, the legendary comic book creator exclaims, The 60s were fun, but now I'm paying for it. It's a fun moment and one of his funniest cameos yet. Baba Yaga In one of Ant-Man and the Wasp's most comical moments, Kurt compares Ghost to Baba Yaga, a bogey woman of Russian folklore who appears and disappears at will. While that seems to be a reference to his humble upbringings, it could also be a nod to the fact that she's actually made a handful of appearances in comic books featuring Captain Britain, a character Kevin Feige does reportedly have plans for. This probably wasn't laying the groundwork for that if we're being honest. The After Credits Scene If you stick around right until the end of the credits, you'll be rewarded fault with, well, a pretty underwhelming After Credits Scene. Basically, it's a giant ant playing the drums, something we actually see earlier in the movie. However, the difference here is that it clearly takes place after Thanos snapped his fingers because there's an error message on the TV and the streets look awfully quiet. It's them. I already mentioned Ant-Man and the Wasp's reference to them. But there's actually another earlier in the movie. When Bill Foster is attacked by giant ants, he shouts, it's them. That may sound like a pretty basic piece of dialogue but it seems like director Peyton Reed is actually a big fan of the movie as it makes more sense that it's a reference to that, especially as footage from it is used at the end. Jimmy Woo Jimmy Wood debuted in 1956's Yellow Claw No. 1 by Al Feldstein and Joe Manili and he later became an agent of S. H. I. E. L. D. This version is an FBI agent, though, and while he's often used for comedic effect, it would definitely be nice seeing him take on a larger role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe moving forward because he feels like a character who has a lot of potential beyond just this movie. The Quantum Realm Peyton Reed and Kevin Feige have both said that there are clues about the MCU's future hidden in the Quantum Realm scenes here and while I didn't spot any of them, I have seen some people claim that they could see Thanos' face hidden in the clouds when Scott Lang is left floating through it. I'm not sure about that but it's going to be very interesting taking a closer look when the sequel hits Blu-ray.